over a couple of different RPOs, man, and a couple couple videos ago, I did um, a lot of the spread RPO read options and shit like that. Uh, and broke those down. Today we're going to be breaking down RPO peaks, right? So I have one queued up right here. I want you to take a look at, you know, potentially what what it could look like, all right? So we got an instant replay here. This is the base of the play, which is a inside zone. Um, obviously, inside zone is pretty easy to read. You know, everybody runs these. Uh, but this play is essentially a quadruple option, right? So you have the option to keep it with the running back. You have the option to keep it with the quarterback. Hit the flat and hit the slant, right? So on this one, uh, we got Eric Armstead on the defense. This is my CFM, so excuse the players if you don't recognize them on their teams and shit like that. But it is what it is. So we're going to run this uh, inside zone here. Obviously, I have to bounce it outside. Uh, but the way that the, the, the offense is set up, you have your tight end and your wide receiver, you know, stacked on the line right there. Uh, so essentially, you can get the edge pretty easily on these uh, inside zones, right? So I'll take a look at uh, the play out here just so you can see what it is I'm talking about. So we got the uh, inside zone here, of course, the option to keep it with the quarterback, option to hit the slant, and the option to hit the, the flat right there, right? Now, a lot of times on these RPO peaks, we have slant flat. You, a lot of times you can just hit the, hit the flat, right? So I'm gonna just snap it right here and just throw the flat. Um, a lot of times that's gonna be open for you, right? Whether that's your slot receiver, whether that's your tight end, whatever the case may be, uh, whether to get out, hit the slant, right? Just hit the second window, boom, easy money. Because a lot of the times when you're playing these RPOs, you're essentially, the defense has to adjust to the run first, right? And then you can mix this in here easy yards, that's 10 yards right there, right? So I'll break down exactly how all of this shit works. Uh, you've seen it all three different ways. Uh, the only thing that really gives you a problem right here is if uh, this guy, if I can um, double team, the guy with inside stuff, right? So the guy with inside stuff can obviously blow this up. But for the most part, you have three other options <laughs> at this play. So if he blows up the run, cool. If not, you can get outside, set up that block. Bam. You know, five five to ten yards is what you can average on this play typically, right? So um, we're practicing right now against cover four quarters, which is one of the better defenses out right now. If you're not playing quarters and palms and cover six, cover nine, all that shit, you play defense wrong, bro. You got to mix that shit in there. But this is one of the better defenses in the game, and it's literally attacking it at every level for you. So I'll get into a couple of the other plays that I have here. Let's call a timeout, reset the play, pick a new one and get into that right so the formation that i like to use uh is formation number 11 in spread playbook if y'all been here before you know why, how i call these plays by numbers <laughs> these formation by numbers uh so essentially what i do here uh in this formation i'm going to audible i'm going to keep 45 quick base i'm going to change the play action option to read option because i don't i don't need pa read you know i've called it one time uh, four verticals, I take that out, and typically I put the touch pass in there. 108 calls, six yards play. It's just one of those plays that's there, right? But the slant audible, instead of calling just a base slant flats, like like you can see at the top of the screen right here, we're going to swap that out for RPO zone peak, right? Um, now, a lot of the times, 99% of the time, I'm not going to call any of these plays out of the huddle. These are just like my ax I need a quick access to these plays, right? Um, and essentially, I'm going to either come out in curl flats, which obviously you can see right there, 45 calls, averaging 8 yards per call. Hit the flat or you hit the curl, right? Um, shallow, wide shallow cross, easy cover for beater, uh, having a middle cross up on the left side. And also if it's cover one, you got a good number two receiver, number one receiver. That out route is a 12-yard out route. No explanation needed there, right? Um, RPO alert FL screen is another one of those just great plays just to run. Uh, and maybe read option is also good as well. Like for those guys that would like to run with um, what do you call it? Uh, inside stuff. He's going to practice against random nickel right here. So the, your read guy becomes the defensive tackle. If the defensive tackle crashes down uh, for the run, you keep it right up the alley with the quarterback. If the defensive tackle stands still, of course you hand it off to the running back. So we're just going to try to make this read here, right up the alley, a couple yards. Yes, this is one of those goal line plays. This is one of my favorite goal line formations, period. Um, let's see if we can get another read here. Out the alley, nine yards. I mean, we got hit right there, but obviously you'll want to slide. This practice, but I don't even give a shit. Yellow. Uh, in a case like this where you have, you know, 
a weak box, you have six in the box. You got five offensive linemen, you got your running back, you tight end, and you're optioning one of these guys. So essentially, you're making it seven on four on five. You know what I'm saying? So he's like this. I did would have had somebody get to the, the second third level right there, but it is what it is. Um, so back to what we're talking about here. Call RPO zone peak. And it's the same as the last formation. Uh, last formation had the two guys on the left kind of stacked together. This one, you know, is tight ends on the right this time, right? So, easy reads. <laughs> or nah. <laughs> That's just inside zone being inside. I mean, uh, inside stuff being inside stuff, right? Um, easily, right here, you can see this is a blitz. So, you can most likely hit the slant nine out of ten times. Bang. Easy completions. Easy money, right? So, what I like to do with this actually is I like to run this flipped. It just seems to work better for me. Um, a lot of times I'm going to run this flipped. We got press on the left. Okay, so when you got press on the left, you most likely want to hand the ball off because that that press defender could end up being in the way of that slant, and obviously the linebacker could be in the way of the, 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 the flat. So most likely hand this off here. Bang, nice hole. Easy money. Take a couple, a look at a couple more options here in terms of what we got as far as RPO reads. I mean, RPO um, peaks. The thing about peaks is a lot of times you can get, you get different animations. You know what I'm saying? So like this RPO zone peak is an outside zone run. You have two tight ends on that side of the field. So, you know, in theory should be good. Sometimes the blocking is not great. Um, we are in... Formation 7 is where the uh, the main one is. RPO sweep peak. Also like to run this flipped as well. It just works better to the left side for whatever reason. Uh, come out here against some random nickel defenses. Now with this one, obviously the, 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 the peak to the slant is there if that linebacker is just like that up close. Um, and you can kind of fit this in there if he jumps down to play the run, which most likely he will. Let's take a look. Is that inside stuff. <laughs> still doing inside stuff things. <laughs> um, here we go. We got an overhang defender over triangle now. So what that means is that's he's basically double covered. So the, the guy that's over him is going to be covering him, and you also have to read that flat guy. So what that means is you have one less guy in the run in the run fit, right? So we take the run, he do it with the QB, get outside the pocket here, bang, bang, it's 20 yards. Um, I'll break that down for y'all as well, just so you can see exactly what I was talking about. Um, instant replay here. So we're keying on because this guy is overhang over the slot receiver, right? He's essentially taken out of the run fit. Because this guy, this linebacker who I means of course he's a DB, <laughs> you know, like this is bad. 20, 21. Uh, because he's there, he's also the alert defender for this slant. So essentially you can take both of these guys out and either A, hand the ball off if you're not playing against inside stuff, or B, do what we did here which is snap the ball, don't give it to the halfback, and then use everybody that's moving left as blockers. Bang, second, third level, blocks, all, all good, right? Um, now, if you're looking at exactly what you're supposed to be reading on this play, is this guy right here. Uh, he's going to come down. That slant's not open because, again, this guy, the overhang defender is literally standing right there. You're not throwing that, right? Um... And this is all pre-snap reads. Like, okay, this guy's overhand. We don't, we don't want to throw that. If this guy, if they're in like 4-3 uh, and, you know, like the guy's not lined up over him, it's one thing. If they're base aligning and shit like that, you can get a little creative with it. But for the most part, if they're line aligning properly, uh, this, is what, this is the look that you're going to get. And a lot of times, like I said, you got two pulling guards here. Bang, bang. You can see the inside linebacker here, the, 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 the linebacker is actually all, is keying all for the run, like the running back. The running back don't have the ball, he backs up the coverage, because the game is programmed to know, like, oh, there's a slant coming behind me, I need to pick this off. So when he backs up, <laughs> he got two pulling guards, this becomes another QB power, basically, right? Uh, QB power is something that's always been good in Madden, but, you know, the way they try to nerf shit these days. Um, so, again, in pre any type of press situation, you don't want to throw the slant because unless, unless you got a guy that's, you know, going to beat on the slant 100% of the time. But, in any case, here we go. Run it again. Keep it with the QB. Get a block 74. Good job. 77, you block no one. 
Um, 77 block no one right there. He really let me down. Could have smoked for a touchdown. Single high safety. All right, so single high safety, that means you got another overhang defender over there, which is this guy um, playing around in your outfit. What does that mean? Let's see. Still get outside. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting indeed, Tyler Huntley. Uh, but yeah, that's that, man. That's, I mean, again, you can keep this with the, the halfback here, cut it up, maybe. It just looks terrible. Um, I personally like it better just keeping with the QB, right? Get another play in here. That was a zero, bro. So you definitely want to see this against that. Um, let's actually go. We can actually look at um, play type. RPO. Want to do RPO peaks. So some of the ones that are better than others are outside zone um, RPO peaks. Um, especially if you're trying to run the ball. Like if you're trying to establish the run, you want to get people out of their run fits. Run some RPOs. It'll get the middle linebackers out of there, right? Uh, we already went over RPO Sweet Peak. Um, this one here is Gun Doubles Offset Week, which is formation number, I want to say number 10 in my book here. So this play is actually pretty solid. I actually scored a touchdown on this um, versus somebody in 335. Um, yeah, we don't have 335 here. Let's just go up against Dollar. All right. And of course, they give me a zero blitz to start. <laughs> Um, so against the zero blitz, you can always alert to the uh, the gift out on the right hand side with sprinkle. But I mean, he does have a superstar DB on. Let's see, let's see what happens. That's an easy read. You know, most of, it's a hitch versus off man coverage. You take that, right? Um, if you get a regular defense here, there we go. So with this type of deal, some of those like pinch their line and everything like that. Basically, make it look like a nickel three three five. Um, these outside zones are always good against this shit. S45 gets a chase down block, but <laughs> you didn't have any look bad, man. Having an X Factor linebacker out there, but there we go. That's the block we want. Easy five yards, um, and you also again have the option to throw the ball here. So if you're reading the guy with the P on his head, if he crashes down inside hard, you can throw the slant, of course. So look at up here. That's a legal man downfield for sure. 74 was right there at the slant. That's it's one of the gifts and curses of RPOs, is illegal man downfield. A lot of times with our punch, you're going to get that, uh, just because these guys aren't capped. So, uh, but here we go. Here's the other option you have. Take it off with the QB. Again, once you, if you don't hand it off to the, the halfback, the guys that are in zone are always going to revert back to their zone because they, see, they know the slant is coming. It's programmed in the game. So you can kind of take advantage of it. Not, not that time, because obviously 91 is going to beat the dog shit out of his man. <laughs> Inside stuff, dog. Inside stuff. Let's see what we get here. So it's just not. It's 91 that's really tearing this up, bro. Inside stuff. If you play against inside stuff, don't don't want any type of inside zone, outside zone, anything like that. This is really going to just fuck with the gameplay, to be honest. Um, let's get another play here, another RPO peak. Just to run through it, man. Um, play type, RPO, RPO peak, another one I like. I love the RPO pop passes, bro. As you can see, the one here, right here on the top is uh, 25 calls, 8.5 yards per play, and that's because it's really, a, a, again, a quadruple option on this play, right? Um, this is a four strong, so you got three receiving options on the right, plus your halfback on the right, so that's four strong. If you don't know about four strong in, in Madden, like in football in general, but in Madden, four strong creates a lot of problems for the defense, man. Like anytime you see, you're never going to see this, but again, that gift right on the left, so you have a fade or a curl. That's just easy money. You just snap through that every time. It's off coverage, snap through the, uh, the hitch, right? Now, when you guys look like this, two deep safeties, looks like cover two. A lot of times you can hit this alert to triangle. Um, especially because, you know, like if you run the ball in this formation at any at, at any point, most likely people are going to step up for that run, right? Bang. Easy money possession catch. Well, not easy money because we got the shit knocked out of them, but you see what I mean. <laughs> right? You see what I mean. You're, like, you're reading that, that, uh, that alert guy. Uh, which essentially is number 32. Uh, if he gets flat-footed at any point and stays for the run, he's 81 is obviously open, right? 
Uh, if that's a user and they're crashing down for the run or you know, whatever the case may be, doing that nickel 335 wide shit and trying to shoot gaps, that's wide open 100% of the time. Um, we just had to wait a little bit longer, obviously, we're playing against the CPU here, but <laughs> um, now in, in certain situations, the bubble screen over here on the right is open. Anytime you see press, you don't want to test that though, just because it's most likely not there, right? It's most likely not there, but we can always hand this off for six to, six to eight yards. You know, we got, I think we got seven right there. Uh, two deep safety again. And... Um, now I ran that one inside just because the, the linebacker hung with the uh, the tight end there. But if the tight end if the tight end is not covered, you pop throw that pop pass, right? Yes, that's Z Gary by the way. Um, again, to CFM, so don't don't pay attention to who's on the roster or whatever the case may be. Now you're gonna look like this. You know somebody's been a little bit exotic, blah 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 blah. blah. You can a lot of times hit this bubble because of the way that the uh, the defense is gonna play this. Thing. So you here, bang. Guy stays, he stays inside to cover the run just because it's four strong. And I'll show y'all what I mean by that. So we got off, we had off coverage on that last play. Um, so what I mean by off coverage is outside corners are off, um, you know, seven to ten yards, whatever it is, right? This guy is in the run fit. He's a curl flat or seam flat or whatever it is, cloud flat defender. Because it's a run, he has to take his first step inside, unless they're pass committing, right? Unless they're past me, he has to take his first step inside. So when he does that, that means that this guy's open, right? Uh, because it's off coverage, you know, 88 is going to get to the corner out here. So this is an easy read for a bubble screen. Um, obviously, off coverage, you want to throw bubble screens. Anytime they're, like, base aligning and, and not capping the defender there. So let's say that, um, let's say that, oh, I'm trying to ID the mic here, Madden. I see that this guy is lined up inside of the tackle box, right? Or right outside the tight end. You can almost always snap throw that bubble. Um, but here we go again. That was a bad, that was a bad takeoff, but you can essentially see what I was doing there. Uh, once I saw that the linebacker was running with the, the streak, <coughs> the, the tight end pop pass, um, I didn't hand the ball off, but I also had that gaping lane right there that I wanted to run through, but, you know, obviously... Let's dive it a little bit. Uh, but that's essentially the fourth option on the play. So first option is the, the handoff. Second option is the, the tight end. Third option being the bubble. And fourth option being the quarterback. I'm rarely ever throwing anything out there to that left side solo receiver unless I know it's a subpar DB out there and my guy is the number one guy, right? So <clears throat> the way I read it, because I'm always reading that guy with the P first. If he crashes down, I'm throwing the pop pass. If he stays back, I'm either handing it up or keeping it with the quarterback. Um, as far as the bubble goes, this would be a nice look to run the bubble just because it's single high safety, again, off coverage. And if that guy on the outside is, um, you know, anywhere inside of that receiver, you can almost always throw that bubble pass, right? Take a look. Play the 50. Five yards, easy money. Just because that guy played the uh, play, you know, did not play it very well. And again, when the guys, the the re guys, all the way inside like that, nine times out of ten, he's gonna crash for the run first, and we're reading the tight end. So we're really, this is one of those reading the alignment pre-snap, and then attacking, you know, making your first read where you where you think the weakness is. So obviously in cover two defense, which is a, this looks like weakness of cover two is right at the seam. You got rock right there, but 15 yards, right? Um, <laughs> and this is all because that linebacker carried the tight end, right? Linebacker carries the tight end. We're looking at 32 right there on the screen. Uh, snap the ball. Linebacker takes his first steps backwards. That means that the tight end is covered, right? Tight end's covered. We're not throwing that. Let's take it with the QB up the scene, up the alley, right? These are these are the, the ways that I'm having fun with the game, to be honest. Like, trying hard in this game is just not the way to go. Um, it, this might be a, a zero blitz, and the guy with the P might come down. So let's see. Easy money right there. <laughs> uh, man blitzers, beware. <laughs> a lot of times when people are man blitzing, you're also like, you know, using the guy that's covering the running back, and the tight end is always wide open, right? Off coverage again, left side is pressed. What does that tell you? This is most likely cover three cloud, cover three with a corner cat blitz, cover six, cover nine, something like that. This doesn't change anything about this play, the way you read it. 
you're going to read that guy that triangle first, and then you're reading halfback to quarterback, right? So, you triangle first. You got to the QB. Only got three yards, five, four yards out of that, but even still, easy money, man. Easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. This is a juke somebody, you know? All right, cool. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, I'll, I'll take a look at one more uh, RPO peak just so you guys can see it. I knocked my, uh, my cord out of my mic. Um, let's get back to uh, RPOs here. RPO peak. Again, we went over RPO sweep. Uh, well, sweep peak, per se. <laughs> um, RPO zone peak is good against uh, nickel 335. Um, you know, I, from what I've noticed. Um, we have RPO zone peak out of gun normal, Y off. That's always been good. I, obviously, almost 11 yards per play there. RPO orbit bubble is another peak. I mean, there's it's really no, no need to go over that just because it's it's an orbit bubble screen. <laughs> like, and you really need the middle, the, the middle linebacker, that's it. Um, RPO bubble, Y pop, the one at the top right here. Um, averaging 8.5 yards per play on that. Uh, very similar play is right under it. It's just uh, the tight end is offset instead of being on the line. So that's really the only difference there, but you know, essentially it's the same thing. Um, RPO peak wide receiver screen is also pretty damn good. Um, I don't know why it says I haven't called this play. I've actually called it quite a bit. Um, <laughs> RPO zone peak right at the top. Again, that's another one where you can, it's a quadruple option. It's the play we started out with. And da -da 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 -da. Yeah, let's, go with, let's go with the gun bunch open offset. So. Take a look here. Random nickel defense. What I want to do is this is like it's not a hash specific play. If you're reading the the right side, if you're trying to if it's off coverage like this and you want to throw the square, you want to be you want to have the most open field as possible. So you want to be to the right. I'll uh, see if we can fit this in here real quick. I'm gonna snap those square just because it's a speed out and it's off coverage, right? That's an easy completion. You know, if the if you know it's. 32, 33, they, they're playing off coverage. You take that all the time, 100% of the time. Right there, we need to turn it up the field. That's against a 90 plus overall corner. Um, let's move this over. Let's move this ball over a little bit. Give us a little more room for the speed out. Again, off coverage. Easy money. Snap throw. Snap throw. Snap throw. Snap throw. Almost scored. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite a touchdown, but big yards, as you can see. Now, in, the, in this case, you see single high safety. You see a guy, an overhang defender right there over that square route, right? Um, so that means that that's most likely going to be covered. It's not going to be as open. But what is? You got two people defending, two defenders over top of three on the right side of the field here. Plus the halfbacks on that side. So you're basically making this, you know, a quadruple option. And you got three on two on the right side of the field. So go ahead and snap it. Bang, a total animation, that was terrible. Uh, let's see if we can use that kind of look again. <laughs> uh, we got three over two again, so, so similar look. Bang, and he's just not getting a good block right there. It's a tight end on a safety, but meh. Now it's three over three. What does this mean? This means you have the option to keep this with the running back or take it with the QB. So, turn it to a read option, man. This is easy money, and this is how this is like, this is how you have fun with the game, to be honest, bro. Like, sitting here trying to throw vertically all game, you know, like, just attacking 20, 30 yards down the field, throwing over routes, cool. But you can also do this. And against this look, again, there's one defender over square, and a snap throw, bang. That's 20 yards. Easily. Soft coverage, right? Now, let's, let's, let's practice this or run this against two men under. Uh, I'll run a couple of the other RPOs against two men under as well. Let's see if we can recent plays. All right, cool. <laughs> Fuck me. All right, all right, cool. Got it, got it, got it. Um, RPO peak. Uh, let's run our favorite RPO zone peak. We're going to flip this just because how we run this entire formation, we run that flipped. Uh, two men under. There it is. So you would think that just because it's two men under, everybody's covered. When no, in reality, it's not. If you have an advantage with square, you like that's a superstar or X factor wide receiver against a regular ass corner, you can throw the slant 90% of the time. It's really open. Well, he covered both that time. 
Uh, what's really open is the uh, the running back against two men under. So I, I didn't hand it off there, but I want to make sure that we are double teaming <laughs> the guy with inside stuff. Dang. Terrible. Terrible animation. I couldn't get control of the halfback right there, but let's run it again. I'm almost getting a weird animation right here, bro. It's very strange. Like, I'm literally just angling it up the field so I can cut up, but... Keep it with the QB. No. Uh, well, there you go. Two men under is how you stop this shit, right? So, you come out in two men under to bag this specific play, but, you know, of course, you're playing two men under, it opens up so much stuff in this. Even this, this animation itself. So it becomes a... Uh, okay. Okay. So, 32 is... Uh, let's see if we can ID the mic here. ID. 32 is this guy. So when we're running this, right? Break down the last the last play. He's turning into uh, like a QB spy after I run, snap the ball. That's mainly because 91 is blowing up the center. <laughs> That's why. But essentially, if we can you know, either hand this off or keep it with the QB right up the alley. I've scored on this play keeping it up the alley with the quarterback just because everything gets fanned out you know what I mean like the running back is gonna should take the defense to the right the the flat should take that defender there just like he does um and I should be able to run this up the alley but you know <laughs> nobody's able to get to that second level that linebacker run it a couple more times see if I can hit the uh, tight end here there we go two man under hit the tight end you know or hit the slant if, if it's not Marshawn Lattimore covering your guy right Typically, the alignment you're going to get. That's a secure tackle free safety, so you're not going to break too many tackles there. Um, but essentially, this is where you're going to live. And now he's out of his own. That's actually, I want to see what happens if we take him out of there, but I don't have time for that shit, bro. I'm about to get up out of here, bro. It's late. It's 11 30 at night. I'm gonna take my spin. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much RPO peak. It's how I run it. So I be with it. Have some fun with it. Tackle with it. If you like the video, like the video. If you didn't, be sure to dislike it. We still have a comment. Send us a subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm out.